nutritional and, and uh, care needs for domestic horses as opposed to wild horses are, are vastly different. Uh, domestic horses are under the care of humans, uh, a lot of human interaction. Uh, some may be on pasture situations through most of the year and then being fed, fed stored feeds uh, during the winter time or cold weather. With horses in, in a wild situation that are outside require nutrient intake on a 24, 7, 12 months of the year basis. Horses are in a HMA, a horse management area. They have to, to be provided for their nutrition throughout the year and whether it be a, a tough season or whether it be a, a good moisture year where we have a lot of forage base, we can have vastly different body condition scores on horses, which would be the, the scoring of the amount of fat and flesh that they have on their, on their bodies. That is usually an indication of, of how healthy the horses are and, and how well they're doing and if they're getting proper nutrition. The, the limited forage can also be due to, to overpopulation and overuse of the habitat. If, if the watershed is in poor shape because of continued 12 month of the year use, those forages don't have a chance to recover uh, if they're constantly, constantly being nipped off. So if we have over a period of a few years with overpopulation, we can have a diminished forage base because of the degradation to the rangeland itself. If one is truly concerned about welfare of these horses on the range and their health, it's important to manage as, as human beings, we have a responsibility to manage. And if we manage the health of these horses by managing the range lands that they, they exist on, it's, it's, it's a much healthier situation and much more humane situation if they are managed well. That's why they have to be kept at an appropriate level that, that matches and corresponds to the forage base and the water base that they depend on and with the other uses that are out there also. During the, the gather situation itself, and most of the gather operations are conducted during the early morning hours when, it can, uh, when the horses can be moved over longer distances without the, the stress of the heat. Uh, because of, of other, other restrictions, uh, gathers aren't conducted during uh, the foaling uh, period of time because of the young foals can't travel very far. So that, that throws the gather back into the summer months that are hotter. So it's, it's a very delicate line to say, okay, we're gonna stay out of the foaling season, but yet let's go ahead and gather horses. So the gathers are conducted early in the mornings. And the traps, essentially the areas, the corrals, the facilities that are set up to bring the horses into to capture them, are set up so that those, those distances traveled are, are kept at a minimum. We use a scoring system for body condition on horses, essentially goes from one to nine. And one would be the score of an emaciated cachectic animal, which is an in, 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 uh, advanced degree of malnutrition, and nine would be a horse that's extremely fat and uh, carrying a lot of body condition. Obviously, this horse is in a, in a fleshy to almost fat condition. She's got quite a bit of flesh here in her neck as it folds into the shoulder here, and especially right here behind the, behind the shoulder, you can see how that folds in well. There's a lot of fat essentially sitting in that area. This is not the typical body condition we see on horses out coming in off the range. Uh, after they do get into a, a facility and, and get on a proper plain nutrition, a consistent plain nutrition, then we'll expect to see horses as somewhat in this condition. Also along the back here, we have a, a little crease going where we have uh, a little dimpling coming down the back here and there's flesh on both sides. That indicates that she's in, into the almost fatty category. You know, she'd be, she'd be scoring a six or a seven on a, on a scoring of her body condition. And you look at the hips and come on down, look at the fullness in the flank. Not just the fill of the abdomen, because a horse can actually have a full abdomen from, uh, from eating heavily, but, but not packing a lot of weight yet. And she has a lot of cover over her ribs especially over the hips. You can't even feel the, the, point, of the, the point of the hips here, or, or, we'll, or excuse me, the hooks themselves. And coming back to the point back here, there's a lot of flesh and fat over those areas. So she scores extremely high in the body condition score. What we expect to see on horses coming off the range in a, on a good year, you, we'd expect to see horses in the, maybe the moderate range, the four up into the five range. On a good year, if things, if mares are lactating, which means they're, they're nursing, uh, providing milk for their foal, it's a draw uh, nutritionally and metabolically on the mare. 
she'll be a condition score where she's down in the thinner range. She'll be, you know, considered, you know, uh, in the two to three on a condition score of, of one to nine. Uh, obviously, foals have a higher requirement for, for quality nutrition as well as the volume of it. And they can be rather thin where we have the more dominant studs and some of the other older horses that have a, a lower nutritional requirement. Therefore, we'll have a better condition within the same group of animals. We can have animals that are fairly fleshy and ones that are not. Are not. And all that is a measure of climatic conditions. How good is the grass? Is there an overpopulation that is overusing the resource? All those come into consideration when we're evaluating the body condition of the horse, which is directly related to the, to the health of those animals.